Public health dentistry relies on accurate and compelling data to identify oral health trends, assess the impact of interventions, and develop evidence-based policies. The data collected and compiled from experimental works, surveys, etc. consists of unsorted data and is not very helpful in understanding the underlying trends or their meaning. Therefore, the next step is to sort this data and classify it into characteristic groups or classes. Presenting data clearly and concisely is crucial for effective communication and maximizing its impact. Let's now explore the various methods through which we can represent data. There are mainly two methods of presenting data, tables as well as charts and diagrams. Talking about tables first, these are simple devices which are used for presenting statistical data. There are certain principles that should be followed while constructing a standard table. The tables should be kept as simple as possible and not overcrowded with data. It is preferable to use two or three small tables rather than a single large table containing numerous variables. The data should be presented in a chronological or alphabetical order and should be self-explanatory. Each row and column should be labeled clearly and concisely and the specific units of measure for the data should be provided. Additionally, if the data is not original, the source should be cited in a footnote. Now let's discuss the three main types of tables, master table, simple table, and frequency distribution table. We will examine each in detail. A master table contains all the data obtained from a survey. For example, it includes all the details like name, age, sex, education, decayed teeth, missing teeth, filled teeth, and DMFT score. A simple table, on the other hand, is a one-way table which supplies answers to questions about one characteristic of data only. For example, it might only show the DMFT score and not all the data gathered under different headings. Lastly, a frequency distribution table is the simplest table which has two columns. Here, the first column lists the classes into which the data are grouped and the second column lists the frequencies for each classification. While forming the frequency table, certain additional rules are to be followed. Firstly, the number of class intervals should neither be too many nor too few. Preferably, the number of class intervals should be between 5 to 20. Also, the class interval should be of equal width. The class limits should be clearly defined to avoid ambiguity. For example, 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, etc. The second method for representing data is with the help of charts and diagrams. These are one of the most convincing and appealing ways of depicting statistical results. These diagrams and graphs are extremely useful since they are attractive to the eye and give a bird's view of the entire data. This leaves a lasting impression on the mind of the layman. Additionally, this also facilitates the comparison of data relating to different periods and regions. Some of the basic rules in the construction of diagrams and graphs need to be followed. First, every diagram must be given a self-explanatory title. The diagrams should be simple and consistent with the data. Third, usually the values of the variables are presented on the horizontal or the x-axis and the frequency on the vertical line or y-axis. Also, the scale of presentation for the x and y axis should be mentioned. While using lines in a graph, ensure that the number of lines drawn is not too many as it can make the diagram look messy. Lastly, the scale of division of the two axes should be proportional and the divisions should be marked along with the details of the variable and the frequencies presented on the axes. There are various types of diagrams and charts that can be used to represent data. Let us look at a few of them in detail. One of the most commonly used charts is a bar chart, which is a way of presenting a set of numbers by the length of a bar. The width of the bar remains the same, and only the length varies accordingly. The bars could either be vertical or horizontal, and are separated by spaces and a suitable scale must be chosen to represent the lengths of the bars. Bar charts can further be of three types. A simple bar chart represents only one variable. For example, the age prevalence of dental caries. A multiple bar chart, on the other hand, is similar to a simple bar chart, 
except that for each category of the variable there is a set of bars of the same width corresponding to the different sections without any gap in between for example a representation of the prevalence of dental caries based on age and gender can be done in this format lastly we have a proportional or component bar chart where the individual bars are divided into two or more parts this diagram is used to compare the subgroups between different major groups of observations depiction of the prevalence of caries based on age and gender can be again explained with the help of such charts the second type of diagram is the pie diagram these are so called because the entire graph looks like a pie and its components represent slices cut from a pie the total angle at the center of the circle is 360 degrees and it represents the total frequency This circle is divided into different sectors corresponding to the frequencies of the variable in the distribution like the distribution of dental diseases in 30 to 40 year olds the corresponding segments are then shaded with different shades and an index is provided for these shade colors however this type of chart cannot be used to represent two or more sets of data the third type is a line diagram which has been proven to be extremely useful to study the changes of values in the variable over time on the x axis the time such as hours days weeks etc are represented while the values of any quantity above this are represented along the y axis for example the age wise prevalence of dental caries can be plotted with the help of a line diagram Histogram is another example of a diagram where the pictorial representation of frequency distribution is done. Here there is no space between the cells on a histogram. However, this graph should not be confused with a bar graph which has space between the cells. In the case of a histogram, the class interval is given on the x-axis and the frequency is along the y-axis. Moving on, the frequency polygon is also another type of pictorial diagram of frequency distribution to draw this a point is marked over the midpoint of the histogram blocks and then these points are connected by straight lines as shown here if you remember we have studied in epidemiology that john snow plotted a spot map to understand the distribution of cholera in the specified geographic area these spot maps or cartograms are another example of charts which are basically maps used to show the geographical distribution of frequencies of a characteristic the coverage of cases of oral cancer by geographic area may be depicted through such diagrams and a dot or point may be used to indicate one such case in addition you might have noticed in some cases small pictures or symbols are used for presenting data such charts are referred to as pictograms they are especially used for the common man for example the population covered by a physician in different parts of the world can be demonstrated with the help of a pictogram lastly we have the scatter diagram which is a diagram showing the relationship between two variables if the dots here cluster around a straight line it shows a linear relationship for example the relationship between sugar intake and dental caries prevalence can be represented with the help of a scatter diagram which would in turn show a positive relationship to quickly recap data can be presented with the help of tables and charts tables can further be divided into master tables simple tables and frequency distribution tables charts and diagrams on the other hand can be further of various types including bar charts pie charts line diagrams histograms frequency polygons spot maps pictogram and scatter diagrams pop quiz
In conclusion, effective data presentation is vital for public health dentistry. By selecting the right format, simplifying complex information using visual aids, highlighting key findings, and providing context, we can ensure that our data has the greatest impact on decision making and policy development in oral health care. We have now come to the end of this video.